Tennessee This Week from WATE 6 on your side starts now. You don't have to worry if you're going to call me congressman or congresswoman or congress lady. Senator will do. Marsha Blackburn takes the Senate race. Bill Lee is going to be your next governor. And Gloria Johnson wins back the state house seat that used to be hers. Coming up on Tennessee This Week. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tennessee This Week. I'm Kristen Farley. We are diving right into the outcome of Tuesday's 2018 midterms with our panel of pundits right now. Joining us here in the studio, we have WATE healthcare analyst Craig Griffith, WATE Six on Your Side political contributor Courtney Piper, and WATE Six on Your Side political analyst George Corda. Good to see you guys all back. Glad Thank you. To be back. Seems, Seems like, like we're, we were just here. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Let's just dive right into it, you guys. The most expensive and closely watched race of the night, obviously, U.S. Senate, everyone. Marsha Blackburn winning by a wide margin, 55% to 44% for Phil Bredesen. Here is what both candidates had to say. I think that you sent a really good message. Tennesseans want a conservative U.S. Senator who is going to take Tennessee values and put them to work for you in Washington, D.C. Tennesseans want to make certain that they have leaders who are not going to kick a can down the road on the issues that affect our nation, that affect our children. They want leaders who are going to tackle the big problems. And they want leaders who are going to be there to work with the president and keep this nation on the path to prosperity that we are on today. Everything of your doing, believe me, you have gone above and beyond and done uh, everything you possibly could have to have made this race right. Uh, the fault here, if there's a fault, lies with me for not making the case uh, that I needed to make in Tennessee. I want the volunteers and the people on the campaign staff to know uh, just how much I appreciate all right, Courtney, let's start with you tonight. Uh, Bredesen started out very strong in this race. Why did he lose? It's a very curious thing. Um, kind of looking and, and breaking down the numbers a little bit more, we saw the 10 biggest counties in terms of voter registration in the state. When you counted up all their cumulative votes, Bredesen won those 10 counties by a landslide. So, you know, Craig's been talking about those, those bedroom communities around the big metro areas kind of being the game changer, and those tend to be a little bit more conservative. Um, what I saw with Governor Bredesen when he first came out, he was very strong, very much on message, and what I slowly saw throughout the campaign is Marsha Blackburn and her campaign were starting to to chip away at him and define him more than he was defining himself. She started hitting back really hard, and Governor Bredesen still had this attitude of, you know, well, if you want that kind of style, don't vote for me. And that just didn't stand up well next to her. George, would you agree with that? What I would agree with is Bredesen's assessment that his defeat largely can be laid at the feet of the National Democratic Party. It doesn't play in Tennessee, it doesn't sell in Tennessee, it's not accepted in Tennessee. Now, this happens at the national level too, where people start to say, well, because of these counties, if only these counties had been, and this state was that, it's irrelevant. He lost. And he lost because his polling, I guarantee you, was showing him that the the National Democratic brand, which is exactly the way he described it, was sucking away the support that might have been his as a, as a very popular he, former he governor. Was no. the he was the last Democrat in the state of Tennessee to hold a statewide office, He's correct? the only one to be elected since 94. And it wasn't enough to, to push him forward. Craig, what do you think about all of this? Well, too much Kavanaugh, caravans, and Trumps to overcome. I think that the Blackburn campaign did a real good job of uh, putting out some issues. The, the commercial that related to what uh, Phil was saying to the, uh, Obama, Pelosi, and Clinton, I think was devastating. He didn't answer very well. I didn't think the sexual assault ads that she put out and, and blanketed the airways with. Mm -hmm. So I think she was much stronger on the attack than he was. And he was running on his personal brand. So when you hit those arrows into his personal brand, uh, even the one where he he supposedly uh, his son made money off a of solar uh, development so uh, he kept she kept chipping away and he never responded well enough to recover and to uh, go against the uh, Canada and the caravans and Trump coming to town what should we expect from Blackburn as a senator 
I think she'll be a strict party line voter for whatever the president is supporting. She said she wants to build the wall. She said she wants to do those things that will increase the prosperity. So I think she'll follow the Trump line pretty much uh, as it comes out. Does agree? Well, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There, there are going to have to be a vote here and there where she's able to say, no, I didn't agree with the president on this, or I no didn't agree with the president on way. that. But it's going to be safe stuff. It's not going to be things that people are going to go after her and say that she wound up being a turncoat. But there are going to be, there are going to be some things in there where she's going to take a slightly different viewpoint. Jimmy Duncan did that. Do you ever think she'll go as no far way. as Corker? No, no, not a chance. That, is that she was, retiring already? That was a, that was a personal <laughs> animus between no. Corker and Trump. Yeah. The president came here to campaign for her, and there is no way that she is going to deviate from whatever the president wants her to do. Marsha Blackburn showed little to no leadership while she was in the House, and you know I don't expect to see uh, the kind of leadership that we saw from Senator Corker from Senator-elect Blackburn. All right, I don't think there's going to be many things that she's going to have to vote on that she would go against the president because the Senate leader, McConnell, will not bring those to the floor for a vote. He'll only bring safe things for Republicans to vote for. All right. We need to go ahead and move on to the governor's race, everyone. Bill Lee winning with 59% to Carl Dean's 39%. Here is what we heard from both of them on election night. I still believe that the message we had was the message that Tennessee needed to hear. It's a message about improving our schools increasing access to health care, growing our economy, making sure this beautiful state will always be a place where everybody is welcome, where everybody is valued, and where everyone is treated with dignity and respect. One of the things you said is you want to be the governor of all Tennesseans, even those who didn't vote for you. Why do you think that's important in this day and age? You know, I think that we have an environment, particularly in the political world, that is more divisive than it ought to be and I want to be a person who brings people together and doesn't divide and I want to do that starting from day one. George, how does this nice guy strategy uh, work now post-election? Well, he can still be a nice guy. Bill Haslam's a nice guy. But if he thinks he's going to make everybody happy, he's delusional. The, this business about, I, 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 this whole statement about I'm going to be the governor of every Tennessean. He's the governor of every Tennessean if half Tennesseans hate him. He's still their governor. So that's not the issue. The issue is, I think, exactly what Lamar Alexander used to say when he was governor. And that is the governor's job is to come up with what he thinks are the best policies for the state and then convince 51% of the people at least that they're the right ones. And that's what he's going to have to do. And everybody's not going to like him all the time. She doesn't like him right now. <laughs> I like him just fine. <laughs> Let me remind you that I predicted his victory. That didn't mean that's because you supported him so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah you tried to be the best person. <laughs> I, I predicted his victory in the primary. No, I think it's, it's very... As a Democrat, it was very good for me to hear Bill Lee's victory speech because I thought he was trying to extend an olive branch and say, you know, hey, I want to do what's best for, for Tennesseans and I want to represent all the people that didn't vote for me and I want to win your trust and I want to win your support. So he's starting off on a really, really good foot. My concern is that the Tennessee General Assembly might eat him alive. He was on a lot of these campaign stops along with Marsha Blackburn and President Trump. Do you think he is as conservative as they? are or do you think he will lean a little bit the other way? Yeah, it, time will tell. During the debates he was very much about arming teachers in classrooms which scares the heck out of me. He was very much about you know not expanding Medicaid and um, so there are some some policy areas where he's very much in line with President Trump and and that end of the party so only time will tell how much of that agenda he can really get through. What do you think he needs to do right now Craig before he actually takes office? What do you think he needs to be hunkering down and doing. Well, last week he announced his transition team and his transition team leaders, and it's going to be incumbent to him on finding some people with experience in state government to run his cabinet level uh, positions because he doesn't have much experience like that. So he needs people that can hit the ground running. And, you know, and now he's going to have to start governing, and that's going to automatically make many people upset with the decision you make. You know, as you said, he's been the nice guy through the campaign, but when you come to governing, there's winners and losers. Mm -hmm. And how he's going to uh, uh, approach that issue, you know, there's, there's going to be people who think that he'll kill their business for regulations and things like that. But, you know, he has to make those decisions now, and there will be, you know, winners and losers, like I 
guy said. If yeah. you go to his transition team website and you click on the priorities tab, his priorities are very much toned down and moderated from what he had presented during debates. Mm -hmm. So it's really an indication, I think, that he wants to try to govern. Uh, if Trump gets reelected, if Trump runs again and gets reelected, Bill Lee is going to have to be really conservative. I mean, really conservative. If Trump doesn't get reelected, he can slide off more to the center if he wishes. But between now and 2020, don't look for him to do a whole lot of stuff that's, that you could say, no, that wasn't what he said he was going to do on the campaign. And then after 2020, I think his bearing will depend a good deal on what happens to Donald Trump. I think his agenda will be pretty good because one of the things that I heard from many legislatures was that Bill Haslam wasn't conservative enough. And I think Bill Lee will be more conservative at, to the approval of the uh, General Assembly. All right, we need to leave that there. When we're focusing a little closer to home, wins by Tim Burchett and Gloria Johnson. When we come back, our panel of pundits sitting in with us to discuss those wins as well. Stay with us. You're watching Tennessee This Week on WATE 6 on your side.